Hello everybody and a really warm welcome to the new term in St John's Children's Ministry and to a new term of videos and teaching resources for you guys to share at home with your families and the people in your houses. So as before these are really informal videos that you can sit and watch, you can stop them, you can have a chat with the people that you're with, you can try some of the activities or you can watch it all the way through and then have a chat afterwards. It's completely up to you. There is uh, on the St John's website a little booklet to go with this set of teaching videos. So if you go onto the website, if you haven't already found it and look under resources, children's resources, then you'll find this booklet and it will give you uh, lots of activities to do in there. So I wonder if you have ever been in a relay race. Why not have a chat and uh, you can share stories if you've ever been in a relay race or maybe uh, you need to remind yourself what a relay race is. What's the point of a relay race? Does anybody know what you have to do for that race? So we're starting our new teaching series and this is called Mission Shaped Living and the rest of the church are going to be doing this as well. So it's great that we're all going to be thinking about the same things together. You might be wondering what on earth mission shaped living means and what it's got to do with relay races. Well, mission really simply means to go out and tell other people the good news about Jesus and share our faith with them. You can think of mission a little bit like a relay race in the way that we've heard about Jesus already. And some of us have already decided that we want to follow him. And so we run our part of the race and we pass the baton on. And that is us sharing the good news with other people. If we don't pass the baton on, the race stops with us, doesn't it? So, we might be at different stages of faith. Some of us will have already decided to be a follower of Jesus or that we want to be his friend. You might be undecided how you feel about that yet, or you might have lots of questions. And that's OK, because we're all on our own individual journey. But the idea behind this study on mission shaped living is that we're called by God to share the good news of Jesus and pass that baton on to other people. And mission-shaped living is all about being ready to do that. So I don't know about you, but there have been times when I feel that God might have been saying to me, you need to tell that person that you're a Christian. You need to tell them something about me. You need to share what Jesus has done for you. And I've kind of chickened out and I've not done it because I've been too scared. Or maybe I've been worried that they wouldn't want to hear it or maybe even that they wouldn't want to be friends with me anymore. But, you know, we can get bolder about sharing this good news because it is worth passing on. And I don't know about you, but when we've got something really good, we ought to want to share it with others. And you and I have the option of choosing whether or not we wanted to follow Jesus. And that's because somebody somewhere at some time told us the good news. Can you remember when you first heard about Jesus or how you first heard about Jesus? You might want to have a chat about that with the people in your house. It'd be great to share each other's stories, especially if you haven't talked about this before. You might want to write it down in your Mission Shaped Living booklet. And perhaps after you've had a think about that, 
Maybe you just want to jot down or maybe just think to yourself this time. You might want to keep it to yourself. But the question is, what is my relationship with Jesus now? And that's just for you, that question. So wherever you are at in your journey, can we be ready when God calls us to share? Because God has called us and any of us can do this. Let's have a look at Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20. And if you've got your own Bible, you might want to go and grab it now. So if you want to, you can pause me for a sec again and go and grab your favourite Bible. So this is what it says in my Bible, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Jesus talks to his followers. The 11 followers went to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. On the mountain, they saw Jesus and worshipped him. But some of them did not believe that it really was Jesus. Then Jesus came to them and said, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. So go and make followers of all people in the world. Baptise them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have told you. You can be sure that I will be with you always. I will continue with you until the end of the world. So that happens after Jesus had died and has been resurrected again. And he appears to his disciples and gives them this really special message. And other parts in the Bible, we see that Jesus doesn't just stick with his special 12 disciples or 11 as there are at this point. But actually, Jesus teaches his disciples to go out and share the good news with other people and help them learn how to share the good news with more people. And so this isn't just a job for those special 11. Because you know, they weren't actually that special when Jesus chose them. They were just ordinary people doing ordinary things like you and me. And you know, Jesus knows that we're all just normal people, just like his friends. And that's why he promises to always be with them. And because his Holy Spirit lives with us, we've always got help when we might be feeling a little bit worried or anxious or not sure what to do. That's really encouraging, I think. So we don't have to go out all over the world like Jesus's disciples did to be sent to tell other people the good news, because actually we're sent right here where we are and we can share the good news with anyone who's around us. Think about all the places that you go to in an average week. Maybe you uh, go to nursery or a toddler group. Maybe you go to school. Maybe you go to sports clubs or other activities outside of school in the evenings, on the weekends. Think about all the people that you meet in those places and all the potential opportunities to tell people about being a Christian and share the good news of Jesus. Find the space in your booklet, if you've got it, where it says draw a map of all the places that you go. And if you haven't got your booklet, you can just grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. That's fine. And spend a few minutes drawing a map of all the places that you go to where you meet people in a, an average week. I wonder if you'll be surprised when you think about it, how many people you might encounter. You can pause me now and do that if you like. So, you know, as I was saying before, sometimes it can make us feel a little bit nervous. 
about sharing our faith with people. But God promises and Jesus promises that he is with us and that we have the help of the Holy Spirit. We don't need to do this on our own and we're not expected to do it on our own. We're going to think about how we can pray and ask God for the right kind of help and grow closer to God so that we find it easier to remember that he's always with us and that he's giving us his help. So again, there's space in your booklet or you can find a piece of paper to do this. If you want, you could even do this on a computer or a tablet or a mobile phone and uh, design a slide or uh, something that looks really funky if you prefer using technology. But if you want, you could write or draw it or do this in any creative way. But I want you to write a prayer for the week. And maybe this is a prayer that you could try saying every morning. And I want you to see if you can include these things. Let's ask God to use us, to give us chances to share his love with other people. Let's ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit and give us love for other people. Let's ask him to help us to see how he's already working in other people's lives in different situations. And we can ask him to start working in the people that we might speak to and get their hearts ready to hear him. And let's be brave and ask him to give us an opportunity to share his love with someone today or maybe next time we're out in one of those places that you have drawn on your map. And perhaps when you've written your prayer well, or wherever you've got it saved, you could, as I said, try saying that every morning or every evening and see how God works in your friendships and your situations. And you know, it doesn't have to be anything scary. You don't have to talk to people for hours and hours and try and convince them that God is real. You just have to share a little bit of how God's love has made a difference in your life and how God loves that person and he wants them to get to know him. Sometimes it doesn't even take words. Sometimes it's just showing somebody else the love of God by the things that we do and the way that we behave. But let's use our prayers and ask God to help us and direct us this week. So kids, your mission for this week, should you choose to accept it, is to get ready to pass the baton on. How about this? You have a relay race. You can make a baton out of cardboard or a kitchen roll or anything you like, something that you can pass on to other people. Practice running around and passing the baton on. And each time you pass that baton on to somebody else, why not shout out something good about Jesus that you would want other people to know? And don't forget to write your prayer and see if you can say it every day. Now, watch out. This message is about to self-destruct. <laughs>